Hey guys and welcome to the first video blog for 2018. So you're probably wondering where I've been or you're probably not and you haven't noticed but I have been super busy to redesigning and converting my garage into my studio which I am in right now. Now um, I it took forever to do I have to admit a lot of hard work a lot of patience and it took up pretty much all my time which is why I haven't had time to record the blogs for 2018 but here I am and we're going to start off the first for 2018 all about I'm going to share with you my 2017 you know business review and I'm going to share with you what worked what didn't work and then I also have a freebie for you where you can download and get access to whatever I mentioned in this video so let's get started <music> so I don't forget one thing because I'm really eager to share these with you because I want to show you that all the photographers you probably follow online or that you admire seem to have it together but let me tell you something if you've just started and you've decided to you know create a business it's not easy and if someone tells you it's easy they're lying to you so I've just listed some things that have happened for me that worked and didn't work so here we go first thing I booked last year 90 clients over the period of 10 months because I was away for uh, two months overseas and um, that you know during that time I had increased my rates um, after experimenting you know lower package offers to my clients now to be honest with you both ways I still found it hard to actually attract clients so I figured why should I be working so hard to attract clients and charge them that just it was just slightly a lower rate when I can actually charge them the real the price tag that I wanted and still work to actually find those clients so if you're thinking that you can't find clients because your rates are high let me tell you that's got nothing to do with it and we'll talk about that more in the in the next few blogs um, that I'll be recording for you so I also did something that you're probably gonna think huh what she what is she doing everyone's doing the opposite so what I did is I stopped doing IPS yep you heard it IPS now people are gonna start you know getting at me and saying no that's where the money is I totally agree it is but for me and you should consider this too whatever works for you you must do it don't just do it because they say it's working now because something is working now does not mean it's going to work for you and look it did work for me and I'm totally I totally back it up but my time is very precious to me I have two boys I have a household I have this business that I'm running and I have a whole heap of other things so IPS was just taking up time where I could have been shooting and adding on a new client into my business that is the main reason why I did not um, continue to do IPS so I just found that the time during IPS I had to say no to a client and I did not want that so I developed a different way and I went back to online galleries and um, I did that instead now I have a whole blog prepared for you guys about you know why I chose online galleries and how you can benefit from it as well if you're hesitant to do IPS the other thing I did is I focused on digital packages more than product packages. So I did have digital packages. Every single client gets digitals from me with added on um, you know, items. So what I did, I removed those items, focused on digital packages and added only prints. Now I only did this because I heard feedback from my clients of what they really wanted. Look, yes value is in the prints and the products but these days you have to find out what your client perceives as valuable these days a digital image is much valuable to my client than a printed image but just to show them the advantages I included both because that suited me and suited my clients and I can say, say that it has helped me booking more clients more and more because as soon as people think that for me I'm talking for me so this might be different for you as soon as people saw that there was packages and canvases and albums in my um, office they sort of backed off so that's why I chose to include only digital packages for this year Another thing which I did and I absolutely do not regret is I pretty much automated every single little task 
inside my business. Now you guys probably have heard before in previous vlogs that I have a virtual assistant, Kathy, who also works with me running the Photographer Society, but she also does my um, admin stuff for Let's Shoot Photography, which is my own photography business. Now I have hired, um, so Kathy uh, stopped working halfway through the year on that business and we've hired someone else to do just the admin work for Let's Shoot Photography so we can both focus on this business long story anyway but what I did is I automated everything so you know you know I'm um, like in 17 hats which is the business system I use everything is pretty much you create the email templates contracts invoices questionnaires and they're saved in there the VA pretty much my VA or yourself and probably can go in select it send it that's it but what we did is we automated other things as well like you know re invoice reminders and we also automated our you know um, posting scheduling whether it's on um, Facebook I also did that for Instagram now Instagram doesn't have scheduling like Facebook that posts for you automatically it actually you actually have to use the app on your phone but what we've done is we've scheduled everything so every two weeks um, my new VA will go in and I give her the images that I want to post post to Facebook with the descriptions she goes in she schedules them during the times she knows the times we've discussed that and then I have those on my phone to schedule and I use apps like later I you can use other apps that are like later which lets you like Panoli lets you um, sh schedule using your phone so all the descriptions in there and that but Usually what you can pretty much do, if you schedule to Facebook, once that is scheduled, you get a notification letting you know your post has been uh, posted, then you can copy that image and post it to Instagram. So anything you can think of, I have automated. So anything that can be automated, I have automated. Now you're probably thinking, okay, but what does the VA do? The VA goes in and tracks everything. She makes sure everything is working. You know, you do get ran we get random emails from clients, questions back and forth from those automated emails. That's what she does. And she goes into my studio manager, which if you're part of the business school, you know that you have it um, for free. And that can be found at the photographersociety.com if you're interested. And she goes in and she tracks everything. And at the end of every week on a Friday night before I go to bed, I've made it into a task for myself to go in and make sure and I just look over everything. But once you have someone or once you get the hang of it, it's so much easier to automate everything. So she only pretty much, pretty much makes sure everything's working. She goes into the studio manager and ticks everything off, adds all the information. She responds to emails. She sends extra invoices for any products or prints that clients might want to purchase extra. She um, follows up with new clients. She adds those new clients into the studio manager, etc. So that's what she does, but everything else is automated. And that not only saves her time and me time, it saves me cost. Um, and expenses so to actually run that business so anything you can automate do it and we have a whole training bundle about automation inside the business school there's a link below this video you can go check it out um, if you want to join so automation was the best thing I took extra advantage of in 2017 and I will continue that in 2018 I also started cha charging for little things like postage um, you know extra USBs. I never used to charge for those things But you know for me to go out to the post office I don't have a phys an assistant physically with me inside my business here I have virtual assistants which could be from any country or in the same country, but work from home So for me to actually take time off and you know once you you've got so much clients Time is so precious to you that you need time off and so that time off um, I have started to charge for if I was to go out and postage so we start charging now for postage and handling for you know I've added in my expenses for my you know print folders for things like that little things that I never used to add into my expenses I did that in 2017 and is has made a huge difference I don't have to stress about it if someone wants their USB or prints posted I've got that covered under my expenses a very important thing that I stopped doing um, in 2017 and I should have done from a long time and really highly recommend you do it too is give yourself an opening and closing hour in your business so 
you know, I get used to get, you probably feel the same, you get emails and um, that want responses straight away, text messages, Facebook messages after 5 p.m. Now, I, um, you know, I decided that I'm not going to respond to any text messages. I'm not against, you know, messaging to, and having clients text message me or Facebook message me we stopped using Facebook Messenger anyway. I find text is much, much more reliable. So, but I've learned to teach my clients that after 5 p.m., I cannot respond to a message. Now, the way you do that is you don't tell them, you just don't respond. So that's pretty much it. I hear a lot of photographers in many online forums and Facebook groups saying, you know, a client texts me at one o'clock, um, I, I have to respond. Don't feel like you're going to lose them. They want something from you they can wait remember you're a business and people already expect as you know business owners that work from home especially to be able to be treated differently like a business that has a storefront so i wanted to be treated like i have a business that has a storefront that has opening and closing hours so next thing is i only promoted myself as a maternity and newborn and baby photographer so i love doing families but if i get a good request I would do them, you know, no questions asked if I've got the chance to do them. Like if I've got spare, you know, spaces for bookings. But I really, really like staying in my studio and I think that working with newborns and maternity is what I really love, including Cake Smash and all the other, you know, um, baby, you know, shoots as well. But I got a lot of requests for, you know, parties and, um, you know, engagements and couples and all other things that you might be asked to go out and shoot. Now, as long as they're so tempting because the, you know, the income from them is really good, but sometimes you, I think you really reach that point in your business where you ask yourself, do I really want to do that? Does it make me happy? You know, me going out and shooting something and coming home and editing it, if I wasn't really encouraged to do it or anything, I just find it very daunting, but that's me personally. So I only identify myself now as a maternity newborn photographer and I love what I do because a lot of people now will only contact me for those purposes and a lot of them contact me for other shoots they see that I advertise out on social media and my website. Another thing on my list was to grow my Instagram because I love Instagram. I Yes, I used to do a lot of posting on Facebook but Instagram has become a really really great platform to be on especially because we are visual you know visual artists so we are photographers and Instagram is all about visuals and beautiful photography so I focused on growing my Instagram to over 5k is now reached almost 9k the time of this recording so and by the way if you're not following me there go there should be a link below on this video Go click, go search for me and you can follow me and I will give you a follow back as well. But I love Instagram and since I released the Insta stories, it's really great to share with you all and with my clients and clients that are thinking of um, booking me in behind the scenes of my, you know, my sessions. So my focus was to grow my Instagram and I'm almost there. It's now February of 2018, but that's okay. I'm happy with where I'm at and I will continue to grow it. And it's a platform I love using and I'm lately encouraging all my clients to go and follow me there because that's where I'm mainly active as well. I've also learned to cut my you know, editing time in half. So usually when I used to shoot a session, it used to take me up to four hours and I would shoot over 300 images. And then the daunting bit was to go sit in front of my computer and cull through those images down to 30 to actually give my clients to choose their selection um, of images. So now um, my sessions run for a maximum two to two and a half hours. And I always have for a maximum of about 100 to 150 images. Um, sometimes even less depending on what kind of session I am shooting. So it's really important to actually teach yourself how to, you know, take lesser images and that way it helps you, you know, so much in um, when you go to edit the images for your clients. So the good thing that I did in 2017 also was I added extra services to my sessions. So as you guys know, um, and I've mentioned just before that I shoot a lot of maternity sessions as well. Now, during the maternity sessions, I found that a lot of clients will come to me with um, no makeup on or they just didn't have the right makeup. And I found that 
I knew that they wouldn't look as good in their images so what I did is I got a makeup artist on board and included her in my packages and also you know we um, we decided that whenever I have a maternity session we would offer makeup included so my maternity sessions now include makeup and I found there's a huge increase in bookings because of that and also because clients know that I have so much gowns and a selection to choose from they literally have nothing to worry about all they need done is their hair coming to the studio we have their makeup done they select what images what gowns they want to you know wearing their images and that's it so I've taken the stress out of looking good for them and they know they're being taken care of but not only by me but by a professional makeup artist so that was the best decision I have ever made in my business I also should mention I do add it on inside my newborn packages as well because a mum has just had a baby so the last thing she's gonna think of rushing out that door is her makeup or her eyeliner being put on correctly she probably doesn't even have time to put makeup on so I've added that in, in inside my newborn packages and it's not compulsory if they don't want it that's fine they don't need to have it as well but having a service like that to make your client you know life much easier is such a such a good way to actually increase your bookings and show value in your packages and what you have to offer them Okay, so you're probably wondering, okay, how am I going to get so much clients in the year? So what I started using back in, I think it was about a year now, I've been using the same Facebook ad that's been running and targeting the clients in and around my area of my studio. And that has given me so much publicity, it's crazy. So I spend the ad about three to five dollars a day and then every month the you know the depending how much it reaches and how much people click on my ad I average about 250 to 350 you know um, for the ad for that month but you know based on you have to work out your expenses and your packages can you afford something like that but if you can afford three dollars a day I highly suggest you check out Facebook advertising it is really tricky if you don't know how to use it because you can waste your money with it as well. So if you're not sure, do some research. Remember, inside the business school, we have two training bundles all about a beginner's guide to Facebook ads marketing and also in-depth that tells you exactly how to go in and set up your Facebook ad advertisement. But my Facebook ad has been working so, so well that it, that's what generates me clients and inquiries every single day. So I'll have a vlog about this soon, but it pretty much sends through the, the least two inquiries a day um, at three to five dollars um, a day as well on a budget. So that brings me the inquiries and it's my job to follow up with the client to turn them into a booking. But Facebook advertising is the one thing I'm relying on and I've relied on in 2017 for getting new inquiries into my business. Okay, so that was what I did in 2017, what worked, what didn't work, why I did them. But let's talk about what I want to improve in 2018. So the first thing is I want to try and let go of my editing. Now, a lot of photographers probably don't, especially if you're starting off new, but I'm starting to get really sore eyes. Um, I have to wear my glasses all the time. Um, it just takes up a lot of my nights when I could be resting or spending time with my kids But it's about letting go and also I have to get better at shooting um, During my sessions so the editing doesn't take a lot of work for this editor if I was to hand or delegate that task to them Another thing I'm struggling with is finding someone that actually knows how to edit and I haven't even looked and I'm saying this so letting go I think of my editing is my you know priority for 2018 and let's see how we go I'll let you know how I go on that um, but that's the one thing I want to do um, in this year to let go of my editing the second thing I want to focus on in this um, in 2018 in this year is to actually record so much more tips and vlogs for you guys that follow me here at the photographer society and also to um, you know uh, give you as much as I can and record it from inside my new studio so that's my main focus because I'm really passionate about helping anyone in any little way I can and hopefully I'll can do more of that in this year as well for you 
Okay, so we talked about online galleries and that I've switched from IPS to online. I want to be able to create more strategies and more upsells and more ways where I can increase my income at the end of every session through an online gallery. So I have decided to add in more packages, more special offers only for clients that have already come and booked me in um, to give them exclusive um, you know, packages that I don't offer to any new clients as well. So something like that and even you know, more ideas I have to sit and actually think about and don't, don't worry, I will share them with you. Um, of how I can you know increase and I call them upsells you know to have that client not go anywhere else and come back to me so that's my focus as well for my own photography business is how I'm going to increase you know um, my sales um, and use upsells um, at the end of every session so the client can always come back and not go anywhere else but apart from that, 2017 was a great year. Every year is a learning um, you know, opportunity to make the year ahead even, even better. Now don't stress, everything that I covered here, I've put it into a PDF for you. It's a freebie, you can go and download it. The link should be somewhere near this video. Go download it and remember guys, if you want more trainings in depth of how to start and grow your business, how to do Facebook ads, how to you know, automate your business and everything else that I always talk about, remember the business school is open. You can go and check it out. There should be a link below as well and you can go join and enroll um, there. So it's currently open, not sure when we're going to close it. I hope to see you guys in there. Remember, go make 2018 the best year yet. If you have any other suggestions for some great topics for these blogs, you can email me, admin at thephotographersociety.com. Thank you so much for tuning in for the first blog of 2018. I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.